How would you describe winning in the culture war? What needs to happen for you to think we are actively winning? I certainly think when we talk about for the 50 billionth time, Bud Light, Target, Sound of Freedom, Richmond, North of Richmond, etc., you can say like, hey, there are clear signs of victory. But we got this story for you, too, from The Washington Post. Her students reported her for a lesson on race. Can she trust them again? Mary Wood's school reprimanded her for teaching a book by ta Coates. Now she hopes her bond with students can survive South Carolina's politics. Now, I know many on the left will outright just say they are trying to stop teachers from teaching about racism. That's a lie. And if you believe that you were lied to, and I'll prove it to you very simply, and we'll start with this. This is from blackenterprise.com. Western Washington University implements segregated black only student housing. I ask you this. Do you agree that there should be racial segregation? If you say we shouldn't have that, OK, what they are teaching in these schools is why there should be. Don't believe me. Let's talk about critical race theory. This one from JSTOR, Brown v. Board of Education and the Interest Convergence Dilemma, Derek A. Bell Jr. Derek Bell, for those that aren't familiar, is one of the founding fathers of critical race theory who said in this JSTOR article, Professor Derek Bell suggested no conflict of interest actually existed. For a brief period, the interests of the races converged to make the Brown decision inevitable. More recent Supreme Court decisions, however, suggest to Professor Bell a growing divergence of interests that make integration less feasible. Bell suggests the interest of blacks in quality education might now be better served by concentration on improving the quality of existing schools. That is to say, famously, Derek Bell, one of the leading uh, authors, founding authors of critical race theory, believed that segregation is actually better. And I think he's wrong. If you believe there should be segregation, fine, so be it. But there's a fine line between teaching children about racism and explaining to them an ideology which suggests racial segregation, that they should prefer it, which they should not. And we have, of course, this quote from Ibram Kendi, who wrote, quote, the only remedy to racist discrimination is anti-racist discrimination. The only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy to present discrimination is future discrimination. And this is what the teacher was teaching to children. If you agree with those things, I have no problem with it. Just be honest. That's what you're talking about. The Washington Post's Hannah Natanson actually misleads and misrepresents what's actually happening as evil people tend to. My view is that I would like to provide to you accurate understanding of what is going on so you can tell me whether you're for or against it. And if you're in favor of these policies, that's fine. Just tell me. Now, why is it the reporter for The Washington Post and so many other journalists would lie about what these teachers are actually presenting to children? It's because they don't think you have a right to know and they want to trick you into supporting them. So be it. If you support those ideas or you want to favor those tactics, that's who you are. Just be honest about it. It's when you lie that I get mad. Here's a story. They say, and, I, and you know what? I always refuse to read this garbage. A gold sunlit filtered into her kitchen. English teacher Mary Wood shouldered a worn leather bag packed with, oh, shut up, you pretentious cheese. That's why I hate journalists. You can talk about the lying all day and night, but the most despicable thing I think in journalism ever is when it's like teacher gets fired for, for teaching books. And you open with a gold. Oh, it was a dark and stormy night there. Jordan Peterson stood atop the lighthouse. Shut up. Just tell me what happened. Jeez. Stupid. Anyway, she has two peanut butter granola bars, an extra pair of socks for some reason. They say everything was ready, but she wouldn't leave. For the first time since she started teaching, she was scared to go to school. Six months earlier, two of Wood's advanced placement English language students had reported her to the school for teaching about race. Lie because she was specifically teaching critical race theory, which advocates for racism and violates the 1964 Civil Rights Act. That's it. End of story. You're not allowed to break the law. You want to advocate for racial segregation. You can't do it in public schools. It violates the law. I'm all in favor of the Civil Rights Act. Would it assigned her all white class a book from ta Coates Coates' Between the World and Me? The students wrote in emails about the book, played about systemic racism. It made them ashamed to be white violating a South Carolina proviso 
that forbids teachers from making students feel discomfort, guilt, anguish, or any other form of psychological distress on account of their race. Uh, Isn't that a good thing, though? You think that a teacher should be allowed to make kids feel bad about their race? Oh, I see. You see, these people, these critical race theorists, they're overtly racist. They want racial segregation. They want race to be the subject matter. People who oppose racism, they don't. Anti-racism doesn't mean you oppose racism. It means this. It basically just means racism. Reading Code's book felt like, quote, reading hate propaganda towards white people. At least two parents complained as well. And so they placed a formal letter of reprimand in her file, instructed her to keep teaching without discussing the issue with your students. Would finish out the spring semester but feeling defeated and betrayed. The high school Wood teaches at in, uh, is the same one she attended. It had been a long summer since Wood's predicament when it became public in a local paper, divided her town, people were calling for a fire, we get it, drew national attention. South Carolina is one of 18 states to restrict education on race since 2021. A lie, once again. The laws we are seeing prevent indoctrination of critical race theory specifically. Now, the left has repeatedly made this lie, this claim that they're trying to prevent people from teaching about slavery. Not true. 1619 Project is factually inaccurate. And when you write a book that says white people have privilege or there's also a book that's what what was it called? Not my idea or something like that, where it depicts a a whiteness contract. That's literally what it's called with a white hand reaching out and a devil tail and hoofed feet. Yeah, as if white people are evil. And it has a whole bunch of insane racist things in it. You should not be able as a teacher to insult someone based on their race or blame a race for wrongdoings. Sorry, you shouldn't be allowed to do it. I just don't care. Race should not be the predominant factor in whether a person is good or bad. And that's what these schools are doing. They say at least half the country has passed laws that limit instructions on race, history, sex, or gender identity per a Washington Post analysis. But again, they're misleading you. These restrictions, they're being factual, but not truthful. The restrictions are based on discrimination that violates the law. So let me clarify for you. The 1964 Civil Rights Act has several different titles. In it, they describe how you cannot or why or in what circumstances you can't discriminate against a person. This includes gender. It includes national origin, race, etc. So if you're a teacher and you come in and say, hey, see that race of people? They're bad. That's illegal already. And so what's happening now is they're saying, hey, that book you have that blames white people for things, you can't do that under the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Washington Post acting like they're shocked by it. They say Texas principal lost his job for allegedly promoting critical race theory. That's right. Critical race theory calls for segregation. That's illegal. A Wisconsin teacher was dismissed after criticizing her district's decision to ban the song Rainbow Land, which lauds inclusive, inclusive, uh, inclusive, ins- <laughs> I can't say this word, inclusivity. The months Wood had hoped to spend hiking, doing yoga and vacationing carefree turned into summer spent avoiding people's gaze at the grocery store. Well, she should feel shame. Her ideology is inherently evil, and I am glad that people are calling her out. Wood believes trust is fundamental, blah, blah, blah. And if she couldn't trust them, how is she supposed to make them trust her? You can't. You believe inherently evil racist things. And what's happening now is the students are saying racists are not welcome here. Hate has no home in this school. And these people who are so hateful and would blame races of people for their problems don't understand they're the bigots. Of course, their immediate reaction is to say, we're just teaching about race. They're not. Or to try and point to the most fringe elements of, say, nationalist or white nationalist politics and a claim that all regular people who don't want racism are akin to that. Sorry. No racial discrimination is wrong. Not a fan of it. I should probably head out, she said to her husband. It'll be fine. Setting his mug down across the room, she looked up at him and placed a hand on his chest. I hate these writers. It's just so awful. This woman is the banality of evil. She doesn't know what she's teaching. She doesn't care. She's part of a cult ideology that seeks to indoctrinate and demean people based on their race. It must be opposed. The first complaint didn't alarm Wood. In early February, she was giving out copies of Between the World and Me, a mother emailed asking to speak about an assignment. Wood didn't see it as different from other parental objections. Wood emailed phone and left a voicemail with the mom. Please call me back. Wood thought she was on safe ground. She had taught Coates' book and accompanying YouTube videos. One year prior, no one complained. She also counted on the fact that AP Lang is supposed to be a high level class. The College Board curriculum says it can address issues that might from uh, from particular social, historical or cultural viewpoints be considered controversial, including references to races. But that's talking about like Huckleberry Finn 
not talking about uh, or, or, uh, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry. Finn. That's not talking about you make, writing a book that says, hey, this group of people is bad. Um, you know, I, I can be fair. I, I want to be fair. If the purpose of the assignment is to crit- critically assess the ideas of critical race theory and say, why are they being challenged? Read this book and then tell me what you think. That's one thing. But to teach the book as something that is true and correct is the problem. That's why I say I think critical race theory books should be allowed in schools to be taught critically, not as as law. And what's happening with these schools is they're not just giving books on critical race theory. They're integrating critical race ideology, critical race praxis into other subjects like math and science. That is crack pottery and should not be allowed. They go on to say that she was accepted. But uh, look, I'm not going to read the whole thing here because these are these are shorter segments. Anti-racist. Anti-racist means someone who believes that in order to fix past discrimination, there must be active policies to restrict people based on race today. That is the definition of anti-racism. I showed you the quote from Ibram Kendi. They want active discrimination based on race today. Now, I know most of you know this, but some of you may not. Racism is prejudice, positive or negative, based on someone's race. It is a belief that some races are inherently better or worse than others. There is this argument about uh, academic or the the new left view of racism that's prejudice plus power, but that doesn't actually explain how the word is used by the average person. Anti-racist never meant you opposed racism. Anti-racism sounds like it does, but the core of the ideology is that in order, as Kendi says, for their to, to remedy present discrimination, you need future discrimination. Anti-racists argue for black only dorms and black only jobs and for racial segregation. I want to make sure that's clear. If you are a Democrat voter and you agree with these ideas, I have no problem. Just say that you do. It's this weird double dipping where they're like, I disagree with that. And I believe in Martha, Martin Luther King Jr., but also don't. Yeah, okay, it doesn't fly. You've got to be honest about what you believe. But I think that's that's the trick. Most Americans oppose segregation. And so these reactionary racists masquerading as leftists who oppose racism because they know that's the in are tricking people into supporting overt racism. There it is for you. But what's winning? I'll wrap it up with a nice little bow. Winning is when students complain and say our teachers are racist and then she gets reprimanded for it. Mm hmm. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.